Christmas Sunday. Here comes Jesus riding on a donkey. He comes in the name of the Lord. So let us welcome Jesus singing Hosanna. Community United Methodist Church on this beautiful sunny Palm Sunday. And whether you're here worshiping in person or virtually over Zoom or you'll watch us later on YouTube, we are thankful that you are here with us and worshiping with us today. There, uh, shown on the slide now, are the list of upcoming meetings. This week, in particular, Young Christian Ministries will be meeting at 7 on Tuesday in the youth room, and trustees will meet on Wednesday the 5th at 7 p.m. online. Please contact your chairperson if you're involved in any of these committees for dates and times. We are on the last week of our 40 days Lenten Bible Challenge, and tonight there is a Zoom meeting. Pastor sent out a link this morning that uh, we can discuss the, the lessons we've had in the last week or two. We have our ongoing Bible study, The Life of Faith. It's every Sunday at 8.45. You can come if it works for you. You don't have to feel like you're behind if you didn't you know, have the book in time or do the readings. Just show up and share in the discussion. Yes. We're not going to be studying this this next Sunday because of Easter. Okay. Right? So All right. Problems. That makes sense. And this Friday is Good Friday, and we will be having a service at 7 p.m. Uh, it'll be online and in person. It's a moving service. And Easter next Sunday, two service opportunities, 6 a.m., Sunrise service on the lawn on 2nd Street, um, and 10.30 Easter morning service, as usual, hit this time. And between then, the men's group will be providing Easter breakfast. So please come and celebrate. Earth Day is Saturday, April 22nd, and um, CC is working on, has, has put together a potluck. Well, we're putting together a potluck and the string band will be there and there'll be music. 
and we're planting a tree where we've uh, had a tree taken out recently because it was diseased. And if you would like to help fund the purchase of that tree, uh, please contact CC with a, de um, with a donation and that would be needed by April 16th. And Pastor and Lay Leader Dave and I are hosting another Sunday Night Live event. We are doing just a fun fellowship night of games and potluck, just appetizers and desserts, two of my favorite things. And <laughs> so please plan to join us on Sunday the 30th at 5 in the fellowship hall. Sunday school is always looking for people to help teach Sunday school. You could volunteer to teach one Sunday a month, work as a substitute, but if you're interested, please let Chris Van Ruten know. And Hope House is also looking for volunteers for data entry on Mondays and Wednesdays. You can contact Joy Kick or Shirley Gray about that opportunity and receiving training for that. Altar flowers, um, today's altar flowers were brought by me in celebration of my husband's recent birthday. But we have a sign up sheet in the, in the fellowship hall and you can sign up to give flowers just because or in honor or in memory or in celebration of something or someone. And we're also collecting, doing Easter lilies, um, and they need to be at the church by Friday, is that correct? Sun by Sunday. Saturday. Saturday? Okay. Saturday. You know I'd get it one of these. It had to be one of those days. <laughs> so, uh, and then the May-June issue of the Upper Room is now uh, available, and you can contact Michelle in the office if you would like a copy. Are there any other announcements? Bob. I just wanted to reinforce what I was talking to everybody about a couple months ago <laughs> about, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> about um, being, being scammed. I just got an, an email from somebody asking for gift cards from the pastor. The email on it was totally absurd. If you just click on the name, the name, you'll see the email will pop up. It's totally absurd. I know Joy got one also. Hopefully nobody's fallen for it since I made that last announcement. But I just want to reinforce that you, there, are skin, there are bad people out there and they want to take advantage of you. So just be careful what you're giving people, answering, putting information on, online and, and that. And always, always, if you have any doubt, contact Pastor directly, or me, or Bob, so that we don't have to have anybody fall victim. I have uh, another announcement. Uh, for those who want to bring Easter lily, uh, you can bring them to uh, the, the kitchen, church kitchen, Saturday uh, between 11 and 12. Somebody will be there. Thank you. Cheryl? Uh, youth group is canceled tonight. Okay. Um, on behalf of the United Methodist Men, we'd like to thank the whole congregation for coming <coughs> in to participate in our drive through Bainfield last Sunday. It was very successful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, this is how we generate funds for uh, scholarship that we sponsor. You guys were here two weeks ago when we presented uh, the checks to the uh, recipient for last last year. Thank you once again on behalf of United Methodist Men. And uh, next Sunday, Easter Sunday, the United Methodist Men will be hosting uh, sunrise breakfast, pancakes. So after the sunrise um, service, come over from 7 o'clock to 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. the United Methodist Men will be serving uh, pancake and all this lovely breakfast, okay? Thank you very much. Um, just one other thing I'd like to mention too, if you could silence your cell phone or your watch, anything that's gonna alarm or ping during the service, that would be greatly appreciated. And if there are no other announcements, oh, I'm sorry, Olivia. 
Um, it's not actually church related except for it happening here in the sanctuary. In two weeks, I will be um, holding a vocal recital here at the church um, Friday the 15th at five o'clock. That's it. Thanks. Okay. If there are no other announcements, let us enter into a time of worship. as you're able for our call to worship. Jesus entered into Jerusalem humbly on a donkey, seeking to transform the people. People gathered from everywhere to wave palm branches and praise him as royalty. Jesus enters into our lives humbly, seeking, seeking to transform our hearts and lives. Let us worship Jesus Christ together and receive him into our presence. Behold, your king comes to you. He is just. He brings salvation. He brings peace. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna.
young disciple, everybody, please come forward. <coughs> Emma, Emily, here is Emerson. <laughs> All right, come, come, come. Welcome, welcome to our church. Wonderful. How are you this morning? Good. Good, good to see you. Okay, so I have something for you. Uh, today, today is a special day, right? What day is, is it today? What, what is so Palm special? Oh, yeah, it is Palm Sunday today. And Holy Week begins today. So I want to I wanna give you this uh, beautiful thing so that you can remember what happened during Holy Week. So when you open it, the first one is about Palm Sunday, right? You wave the palm branches and Jesus entered into Jerusalem. What happened on Monday? Did he do something? What does he say on Monday? Cleansing? Temple. temple, yeah. He went to temple and he cleaned it. And how about Wednesday? Wednesday, somebody betrayed Jesus. Peter. Peter, yeah. And how about Holy Tuesday? Before Wednesday, Tuesday, something happened. Yeah, Jesus taught the Pharisees to be humble. And Wednesday, Peter betrayed Jesus. And Thursday, one more thing. What happened Thursday? There were two things. There are two things that happened. Jesus' foot washing on Thursday. And the other one? Jesus was arrested. And how about on Friday, what happened? Yeah, he died for us. And Holy Saturday, Jesus in the tomb, right? So do you, do you think uh, it's a joyful week? Not really, right? Yeah, we, we sang joyfully today, but a lot of things happened to Jesus. You know, he, do you think uh, he had a hard time and difficulties? and sufferings on Holy Week, during Holy Week, Jesus did, right? It was not a really happy, happy week. You know, when we live our lives, sometimes a lot of things happen. Sometimes it's joyful, sometimes it's not joyful, and you have to suffer for something. And, um, you know, so, why did he go through all these uh, difficult days? Why did he suffer and die? Did he die for us? Yeah, he was thinking about all the people in the world. And he wants all of us to be saved and to be okay, to be saved so we can be the children of God, redeem the children of God, bless the children of God. That's why he went through difficult things on this holy week. So let's remember, do you think your life will be always like joyful? Always, always? Yes, no, no. Yes and no. <laughs> okay. You may have to go through some difficult times. Like the time that I was married. Oh, yeah. So remember, Jesus also had a really difficult time, but he did it to help us, right? So sometimes when we try to help the world, help our friends, help our loved ones, we have to go through difficult times. And guess what? There is a good news. Who is with us? God. God is with us. And Jesus is with us. Do you think he knows our suffering? Yeah. He, he went through no. himself. But what happened um, 
Next Sunday, what happened? Coming next Sunday? Easter! Easter, yeah, that's Easter. So <laughs> I'm going to see you next Sunday for Easter. Easter. Yeah, 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 that's a wonderful day. So let's remember Easter when we go through hard times. Amen? All right, let's have a prayer together. Come, let's make a circle and pray together. Come, come, come. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Oh, dear Jesus, thank you for having gone through hard times to help us. Help us to follow you and remember that you are always with us. In your name we pray, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go. Be careful. service where we ask God to bless our gifts and show us how we can love and serve others. I'll now ask the ushers to prepare to collect the offering and ask that you would please pray with me. 
The crowds offered you their coats to walk on. They waved palm branches honoring your presence. Today we honor you, Lord, with our faithful tithes and offerings. We lay these gifts before you, humble tokens of our love, a public display of affection for our King of Kings. Amen. Amen. as you were able for our scripture reading. Today's reading is from Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11, and it's Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, saying, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for all God's people. Thanks be to God. Jesus never gives up. He kept showing up for his flock 
everywhere they are. He showed up in the wilderness for all who followed him there. He did not disappear when he found out the crowds were getting hungry and needy. He stayed put and figured out how to feed the hungry. And Jesus also showed up when his beloved Lazarus died and people were already grumbling about him getting late, arriving there late. Again, he stayed put and figured out how to strengthen their faith. So after raising Lazarus from the dead, authorities and religious leaders, they began to make plots and plans to arrest and kill Jesus in Jerusalem. So that was the prelude to his journey toward the cross. But he still showed up in the streets of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, even though he knew all about how that week would unfold for him. Neither death nor life, anything in all creation could make him give up on his flock. But as we know, many people gave up on Jesus so easily because they wanted a king who would work for them, who would work for their agendas. So when Jesus chose the kingdom of God instead of their earthly kingdom, many people were disappointed and they gave up on him and shouted, crucify him, crucify him. In the same street of Jerusalem, only four days later. Well, never gives up that slogan per se does not mean anything because most people don't give up easily what they have or what they want. So we are all so good at not giving up and being stubborn. Sometimes we are like dogs who would not give up their favorite toy or bones. That's my dog, Sammy. And he loves hat, hat, all kinds of hat. So people who come to the park, they know him as a oh, dog with a hat. <laughs> so when he's having this hat, in his mouth, he would not play with his friend, even though his favorite best friend, dog, show up, he would not play. He would just keep it <laughs> to himself, so we have to take it away from him so he can play. Well, we all have something that we don't want to give up. And what is it for you? The weapon, weapon industries never give up their privileges and power in our country. They keep pushing the Congress to increase their profits every year, even after 9,870 people have died from gun violence in the USA this year alone. Almost 10,000 people died only this year 
this year alone, 2023. So that's an average of more than 114 deaths each day. After Nashville Covenant School shooting last Monday, and after the shooter was revealed as a transgender, people blamed transgender community for the tragedy, rather than failing gun safety law in our land. For some people, guns are more important than justice for transgender community. Where is justice? Where is peace? Where is grace and truth? Why did people give up on Jesus? Because Jesus challenges everybody to go beyond their own agendas and follow the will of God, which is to love everybody from all sides. Jesus said to Pontius Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. Meaning, in his kingdom, all are loved. So Jesus loved everybody. He loved the Pharisees as well as the non-religious and the sinners. Jesus loved the Romans as well as the Jews. He loved and forgave all those who persecuted and crucified him as well as his disciples, either faithful or unfaithful. Jesus touched the unclean. He associated with the outcasts. And he healed the disabled even on Sabbath, Sabbath day. However, all these things were too hard. So people gave up on Jesus. So we sometimes do the same or so. But our Lord Jesus never gives up on us and has kept showing up in the streets of our lives to save all of us from our self-created world of sin and death. He comes with his peace, with his justice. He shows up with his grace and truth. So when we give up on Jesus, we give up on peace with justice and grace with truth. Well, there were the crowds and there were the multitude of people when there were shouts of Hosanna and Hosanna. And also there were multitude of people who uh, shouted, crucify him, crucify him. However, when we look closely, there were also individuals and small groups here and there, not so loud, but rather quiet, they were the ones who did not give up on Jesus and kept showing up. Simon from Cyrene, he helped Jesus carry the cross. He was from Africa. 
and he continued to follow Jesus until he died 30 years later. And there was a woman named Veronica who wiped Jesus' face on the way while he was bleeding. There were a group of women disciples who followed Jesus up to the cross. And they were the ones who showed up at the empty tomb on Easter morning. The criminal on the next, next to Jesus on the cross, he recognized him as a savior and defended him and prayed to him. Also, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, they showed up to take the body of Jesus and laid him in the tomb, giving him a proper barrier. All of these disciples risk, risked their lives and showed up for Jesus. They had not given up on Jesus in the most fearful moments, in the most vulnerable moments for Jesus. So today on this Palm Sunday, we may learn that maybe we do not need a multitude of people the crowd with the noises who shouts this or that <clears throat> because we know that God is working with whomever does not give up on Jesus. God works with individuals or small groups who are faithful and unafraid, willing to go anywhere with the message of Jesus. Jesus is our peace, our justice, our grace. He is our truth. So, siblings in Christ Jesus, let us begin our holy week not only with praises of Hosanna, but also with penitent hearts. For all those moments we have given up on Jesus and disappeared from the streets of our communal lives. Let us follow Jesus in all circumstances, faithfully and unafraid, and show up for his flock everywhere, wherever we can. So we pray that God may bless us all on our Holy Week journey. And come join our Good Friday service at 7 o'clock on Friday. There is no Easter celebration without Good Friday worship. Let's have a silent time with God.
O oh God of love, help us to follow your Son, Jesus Christ, in all circumstances. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, all the siblings in Christ, come to the Lord's table, all you who love him, and all you who confess your sins and wish to make peace with God and with one another. Please join me in the prayer of confession. We confess that we are not so different from those who welcome Christ into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, yet later shouted, crucified him, or remained silent in the face of injustice. We have betrayed you too, Lord Jesus, by our sins, both secret and known. Yet you died for people like us, and you rose on the third day, that we might be redeemed. For the sake of Jesus Christ, do not hold our sins against us. Help us to see your glory. Draw us closer to you, that we may become more faithful and more joyful servants of the King. With a humble heart we pray. Amen. Let us have a silent prayer of confession individually. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor and to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. 
When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite helpers to come forward. The communion is a means of grace by which we are touched by the Spirit, by the grace of God. It is a very special way to experience God's grace and His presence and forgiveness and all the promises made in Jesus Christ. In our United Methodist Church, this table is open to everyone, regardless of all kinds of differences that we have. So you are all invited to receive a blessing by participating. If you are not, uncert not certain, then you just put your hands on your heart, then I will bless you. So this is the Lord's table. No one can claim this table. It's for you, between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us receive the blessing.
body of Christ broken for you. Let's pray together. Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live your way and share your joy. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen.
May the love of God, the Father, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit goes with all of you and with your loved ones, now and forever. Amen.